Hey guys, for more like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe, the like button and the notification bell. Hey everybody, it's Kevin Wadsworth here from NorthStarBadCharts.com and uh, those of you that don't really know much about me, I'm a technical chart analyst and a scientist by trade, a meteorologist. My background is in forecasting the future in terms of atmospheric conditions and uh, and particularly for um, military aviation. So that's my background and I've got a sort of very scientific approach to uh, trying to predict and gather the evidence for where things are going over the next few years. And that applies to things like the stock markets, it applies to commodities, precious metals, and, and all that kind of stuff, and also to currencies. So I've, uh, I've produced a US dollar index chart, which I've been tracking for some time. And I've, um, I've been doing a little bit of work around the US dollar milkshake theory, as put forward by Brent Johnson at Santiago Capital. Now, there's a very, very good um, video podcast, if you haven't seen it. Um, that is really worth watching. And um, I'm just going to share my screen, turn my camera off. If you just give me a moment to do that. Okay, that's the screen sharing switched on now. Now I'll just glance over here and turn the video camera off. So this is the, um, the tweet I'm talking about, Santiago Capital um, at Santiago AU Fund. And if you click on... Uh, this particular um, video here, this particular uh, podcast, it explains very, very clearly the uh, background to the US dollar milkshake theory recorded by the guys at uh, Real Vision there. And the theory is, as I say, it's very clearly well explained and it's just um, a, a few short minutes and it's really worth watching it because it does give you uh, a, an idea about the dynamics behind the global usage of the US dollar and what its implications may be going forwards. Now, as a technical chart analyst, I'm really wanting to find the evidence for the US dollar milkshake theory. And I'm not really aware of any technical chart analyst that has spent a great deal of time trying to do that. Um, so I've, I've, I've done that and produced a chart that hopefully Brent Johnson and um, anyone else who's interested in the US dollar milkshake theory will, um, will appreciate. Um, so this is the evidence-based chart that I'm talking about that I've produced. And I'm just going to talk you through it because it's it's important to, to understand um, the, the two main possible scenarios here. Now, they, they hinge for me as a technical chart analyst over how you treat this very steep incline that um, I've labelled as Zone 1 that took place during the late 1970s and into the early to mid 1980s. So uh, the back end of the 1970s, this is when gold peaked, of course, around about 1980. And then the US dollar index went on a, an absolute, you know, scream of a, a bull run. And one way of viewing this is that when the US dollar came off of the gold standard in the uh, early to mid 1970s, a, a, a an event began to unfold and uh, effectively, um, the US dollar, free from its shackles, exploded very, very strongly versus all other um, major global currencies. So the US dollar index rose to a value that was over 1, 160. Now, if, if you view that incredibly steep rise as being unrepresentative and if you view it as a sort of a, as I would as a scientist in, in sort of physics, uh, view it as a sort of a beach ball being held under the water scenario that carries a lot of um, extra momentum and is able to push through major resistance lines, then you have a scenario where you can count this section here from sort of 1983 to 1986 as a blow off top. And then what happened is that the US dollar index settled into a pattern that was contained by a major support line and a major resistance line. And you see this expanding, um, slightly descending wedge pattern with a thick black line up here and the thick black line at the bottom. And all of the price action of the US dollar index fits within that, except for this blow off top. 
Now, if that is the case, then the milkshake theory um, may prove to be incorrect because we've hit the resistance line here, major resistance line, and we're now declining. And I think in my view, highly likely to reach point A here. Now, you'll notice that zone one, zone two, and zone three are all bearish rising wedges, They're bearish rising chart patterns. Any technical chart analyst will tell you that these sort of rising patterns, when they break to the downside, the bearish um, potential is unleashed and you move from being in a bull market to being in a, in a very clear bear, bear market. And uh, over at northstarbadcharts.com, we label these lines as sleep mode lines because what's happening is that the stock, the share, the commodity, or in this case, the currency that breaks down is going to sleep. Okay, it's in sleep mode and it's in its slumber mode all the way through this period here. And then it wakes up again when it breaks out ab above major overhead horizontal resistance. And you can see these 15 degree angles that kind of spookily um, develop every single time. This 15 degree angle developed in the 1970s, it developed in the 1990s, and it developed throughout the early 2000s until we got the breakout in 2014 there. And each time we get a rising pattern, the bearish pattern, it's um, at, at a shallower angle. Now, what's happened now is that if the milkshake theory is going to um, hold water, uh, or hold milk, if you pardon the pun, <laughs> um, then the milkshake line needs to be active. So this is the milkshake line. And if you draw your attention to the lower major support line and the milkshake line, then what you're viewing is a bullish descending wedge bound by the major support line at the bottom and the milkshake line. And in this scenario, the peak in the 1980s was not a blow off top at all. It was a, a peak that, well, I suppose you could still refer to it as a blow off top, but it's a peak that the technical chart analysis needs to respect and accept and and the chart that is going to dominate is the chart or the support and resistance line that's going to dominate is the one that takes that into account. In other words, the milkshake line. So the milkshake line was crossed in 2015 and we broke out and we back tested it. And then we have moved strongly higher since and reached a high more recently of around about 115 on the US dollar index, which coincidentally is the major resistance line that I was talking about. So we're now turning down. And I think we can probably agree, having broken down below this latest support line, we can probably agree that point number A at 95, at some stage during next year, most likely perhaps towards Q3 or Q4 of next year, that's the likely destination. It's not certain, it's not guaranteed, nothing ever is with technical chart analysis, but following this breakdown, it seems likely that we're headed to 95 on the US dollar index. And that is where we're going to find out if the milkshake theory is is likely to um, to continue because this large red zone three is what has guided the US dollar index out and above the milkshake line. So this red zone is effectively the new channel that is guiding the US dollar index to its milkshake destiny which will be, if it unfolds, um, certainly above this green zone that I've highlighted around 114, 115, and is highly likely to be well above the previous peak of whatever it was, 165. So that would be your milkshake scenario, a back test at point number A, and then a rocket move to the upside. If that doesn't occur, then we have something else going on, and if it doesn't occur, a breakdown at point A is highly likely to lead to point B, which is a retest of the milkshake line itself. Now, at that point, point number point B, the milkshake theory could still be in play and we could be moving as low as 76 in 2027. Of course, the value is slightly higher or slightly lower, depending on when we hit the milkshake line. And that is where the real test comes in, because a breakout from a, a bullish descending wedge can have a back test. 
and we have actually already had the back test in 2018. So in all probability, if the milkshake theory is alive and healthy, then we should not fall be below point A. If we do, and we get to point B, um, then that would be somewhat unusual following such a historic breakout from a bullish descending wedge. But at that point, at point B, if we have any further downside, then what it means is that all of this was a false breakout above the milkshake line. And in fact, the major resistance line is the one that's in play. And we would then be heading towards point C and possibly even lower as the US dollar suffers some kind of terminal decline, which could be a result of you know, the de-dollarization that's going on around the world and the US dollar losing its status as um, global reserve currency. It depends how the dynamics of that all play out. Also worth noticing that the cyclical lows in the US dollar index have so far occurred, um, let's call it a 15 year cycle. It's varied from about 14 years to about 16 years, sometimes referred to as a 15 year cycle. And if we hit point A in Q4 of 2024, that would be 16 years after the previous low. So it would make sense for the US dollar index to continue to move upwards at that point. So it makes it even more important that point A does not fail. If point A does fail, then the milkshake theory is in a little bit of trouble and it's in a lot of trouble if we move below point B. So the summary and the conclusion from this podcast is the milkshake theory is going to get a severe test at 95 and then it's going to, going to get its final and terminal test if we get down towards this area around 75, 76. Uh, at that point, we'll know for absolute certain from a technical charting point of view whether the milkshake theory um, is going to fully play out or not. Uh, and of course, we'll also have our answer if this area at 95 holds, and then we break again above the area around 101 and a half, 102. And if we break above that, then the milkshake theory certainly looks to be um, you know, very strong if that happens. OK, um, I hope that has helped to put a, a technical analysis, scientific uh, viewpoint uh, with weight of evidence to Brent Johnson's milkshake theory. And I hope um, lots of uh, analysts and commentators take this um, further and uh, possibly develop my work here uh, and give me feedback and comments as to what you think, um, because these sorts of roadmaps uh, and situational awareness, um, for me anyway, help to um, visualize and, and make very, very clear where we are at any given point in time. And I think as a, as a trader or an investor, um, that's critical information that you, you really need to uh, have in your, in your toolkit. That's it from me for now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching, listening and speak to you again very soon. Bye bye.